I may have just gotten back from London, but I am off again to Bentonville, Arkansas to celebrate the 10 year anniversary of the Crystal Bridges Museum. So I will be touring their special exhibit as well as some new exhibits at their sister museum, The Momentary. Oh, oh my gosh. So I made it to Bentonville, Arkansas, and I'm getting ready to head over to the momentary to take some photos and check out the exhibits and meet up with everyone for a happy hour, which is very fun and exciting. It is super hot outside, so I am wearing <laughs> basically uh, this sort of denim jumpsuit and then my little Jimmy Choo espadrilles because it is music on the grass kind of outside area. So I don't wanna, you know, fall into the lawn. I am a little bit sleepy. I woke up at 4.30 this morning and I've just been on two flights today. So hoping that I can yeah just get it together energy wise and yeah just have a great night but i'm sure i will it's always super fun to go to the momentary so i'm gonna head out now i will show you all my room i have a great king size bed this is the king suite at 21c i already helped myself to some coffee and threw everything everywhere <laughs> like i do love this little sort of like I don't know what you'd call this little nook area for working and stuff. I also brought the newest, I almost called it an episode of Vogue. That's when you know you're tired, but yeah, I think, okay, time to go. I'm just going to go. I will see you guys at the momentary. All right, so here it is. The momentary actually just opened in February of 2020 and it is such a cool concept. It's a contemporary art space for visual, performing, and culinary arts. And it actually used to be an old cheese factory, which they've done an incredible job of transforming it. And it's really adorable in the summer. They have games. There's like a huge outdoor concert that's going on. And oh, yeah, I'm gonna set up my lounge chair and check that out later. But I wanted to come and get a peek before I go inside of the super famous Tavares Strawn work up here and it says you belong here which is so beautiful inside of the momentary there are some really incredible exhibits and we're going to start with this Kenny Rivero show and Kenny is a New York based painter and this exhibit which is titled the floor is crooked focuses on works that he's made over the last 10 years it's almost like a little mini retrospective where the curator dives into key themes that have been present in his work for the last decade and these themes include dominican and american identity afro-caribbean symbologies socio-geographic solidarity cultural and family expectations, race and masculinity. So definitely tackling some robust subject matter in these works.
The next exhibit is a series of video art by Garrett Bradley titled American Rhapsody. And in these films, Bradley explores concepts of race, class, familial relationships, social justice, Southern culture, and US film history. And the videos tell a narrative where mundane and ordinary life events become these images of beauty and reverence that are connecting the dots from past to present and offering this new vision for the future. And that's going to be it for tonight. I wanted to get some shots to show you the interiors of this building because it's absolutely incredible. This hole actually extends all the way up to the tower bar at the top of the building, which has these really incredible views of Bentonville. But I'm a little sleepy, <laughs> like I mentioned in the beginning. So I'm going to head back to the hotel and get some rest and start the day bright and early at Crystal Bridges. Good morning! We are at Crystal Bridges and I'm actually going to start exploring the outside and the gorgeous grounds starting with this George Seagal sculpture just because I always usually run out of time and this is just as beautiful as the works that are inside the building. I mean look at this really adorable little Yayu Kazama work just living its best life amongst the greenery. This is some more Yayu Kazama. This is a piece titled Narcissus Garden, and it consists of over 900 of these mirrored spheres. And this particular installation has been shown over 40 times around the world, but I just love it in this natural setting. It's so magical.
As we walk a little further, we see Louise Bourgeois' famous Maman sculpture, and it is really special to see this here because there's actually only six of these in the world. The others are in Tokyo, South Korea, Canada, Spain, and London. So to see one of these in Arkansas is just very special. As you walk around the grounds, you can really appreciate the architecture of this building even more. It just blends seamlessly with the natural surroundings, which I'm sure is what the architect Moshe Safdi was going for. Now we're gonna head up to the North Forest. This is actually where they have their Northern Lights around Christmas time. I'd love to come back and see those. But we're immediately greeted with this Dale Chihuly sculpture. And this is a steel boat that's actually filled with his signature colored blown glass forms. And apparently there's 35 acres of trails that are part of Crystal Bridges and there's art scattered everywhere so this video is really just a scratch on the surface of what's happening i would highly recommend taking a bike out and checking everything out because it is a little bit of a trek <laughs> what we're coming upon now is this awesome work by nancy rubens and her work consists of found objects that are transformed into these sort of large-scale formations. And she's been known to use televisions, mattresses, airplane parts, surfboards, I mean, you name it, in her works. And obviously she has used canoes very effectively here. And down this path is a new work by Rashid Johnson titled The Bruising for Jules, the Bird, Jack, and Lenny. 
And this is a 20 by 20 by 20 foot living greenhouse that features a collection of native and non-native plants in addition to everyday objects. Johnson is known for combining influences of art and architecture and nature in his works and he worked really closely with the museum to source plants that are local to the area. Now we're back inside in the nice air conditioning. We get this fantastic view of these Dale Chihuly glass blown sculptures floating just amongst nature. So this is a very, very special exhibit. This is the entire reason that I came out to Arkansas. This exhibit is titled Crystal Bridges at 10, and it's an exhibit that celebrates the museum's 10 year anniversary. So happy birthday, Crystal Bridges. It pulls artworks from the museum's permanent collection, it features over 130 artworks, and it's been organized into 10 distinct art experiences. This Norman Rockwell work of Rosie the Riveter is one of the museum's most famous. They did pull out a lot of their most revered artworks. In fact, my Uber driver was talking to me about this artwork when we were driving over. This next room is one of my personal favorites. It is a tribute to portraiture and how Alice Neal influenced Jordan Castile, both who are famous for their portraits. The two paintings that are featured in this exhibit, side by side here, the Alice Neal's on the left and the Jordan Castile's on the right, are black men whom the artists got to know in their respective communities. And they both chose really distinct ways to portray them as far as scale and setting and pose. I love this next room because I remember the last time I was here and I was viewing this Francis Guy portrait of Brooklyn in the winter in the 1800s. I kept thinking, wow, that was so different back then compared to what Brooklyn looks like now. So I think it's really cool that they've dedicated an entire room to this painting. They actually partnered with the University of Arkansas's Tesseract Center for Immersive Environments and Game Design to transform this painting into a digital environment where there's this interactive walkthrough that sort of highlights different elements of the artwork. I would personally would love to create one of these. This next experience is designed by the artist Mark Dion, and it's inspired by the four elements of air, earth, fire, and water. So 
I believe we're starting with air, then you'll see in the next room, it starts to morph into earth and then fire and water. This experience is about seeing oneself through portraiture and portraits are featured from really famous artists like Ruth Asawa and Maliko Magosi, Joan Brown, but it also features 24 works from the community on the walls right alongside these well-renowned artists.
This part of the exhibit is so cute. You can create your own self-portrait. And I love how Crystal Bridges makes their exhibits so interactive. It's really important to keep the viewer engaged and connected, especially for exhibits as large as this one. And I just think they always do such a good job of this. There's multiple places throughout this exhibit where they have nice little installations like this where you can actually interact. This experience features works based on lived experiences and relationships with the United States. And in here, there are some more iconic works from the museum's permanent collection, like this Carrie James Marshall, it's titled Our Town. Across from it is this fantastic work by Sanford Biggers. This is a work by Carmen Herrera, who is apparently 106 years old and still painting. That is just so inspirational. I have actually yet to see this work by Pharrell Bees, so that was really enjoyable to see. I think they might have just acquired this in 2020. The next experience is about how light, color, and sound impact the way we experience art. And it starts with this Joseph Albers work that is just slowly changing colors before our eyes. love this Noguchi work. I think the way that the light hits it is absolutely stunning, especially next to its neighbor, Mr. Albers.
this is another adorable interactive experience where you are encouraged to recreate Maxfield Parish's The Lantern Bearers. I will insert my own attempt on the screen here, but it's just so cute to see families and friends have fun with art and to learn about art history in this kind of way. The last experience really goes out with a bang. Some of my favorites are in here, starting with this Andy Warhol of Dolly Parton. We'll also see sculpture from Georgia O'Keeffe, Vanessa German, and even a really beautiful painting by Loie Howell. time to stop and refuel at 11. I always get the crispy chicken sandwich. 11 is the museum restaurant and it's really cool because you can eat under this beautiful giant Jeff Koons heart. So given that they pulled a lot of pieces from the permanent collection for Crystal Bridges at 10, the exhibit that we just saw, I was really interested to see what they replaced those pieces with out of the permanent wing. So we're here now in the contemporary wing and on the left here, this is a Helen Frankenthaler from 1951 and I I love this one because you can see perfectly that she has not discovered her paint soak stain technique yet. And the other thing that I love about it is it's displayed right across from a painting that she created in 1961, 10 years later, where it's actually a perfect representation of her paint soak stain technique. And so the fact that these two are just looking at each other sort of across from the wing and you can really see how her work evolved just right here. I think that's genius curation. Oh, I just love an Adolf Gottlieb. This work is stunning. I mean, honestly, all of the exhibits from the abstract expressionist movement are, are my favorite. That's one of my favorite times within art history. We also have this beautiful Joan Mitchell painting hanging out next to her friend, <laughs> Helen Frankenthaler, which is very fitting.
this is another favorite room of mine i have a lot of them obviously <laughs> and this one is devoted to pop art you can see this gorgeous work by alex katz you can see the dan flavin just beautifully framed in the hallway behind it Here we have a work by Peter Saul, and then on the opposite wall we have a work by Jasper Johns. Really all of the greats are just here in one space together. We have a Robert Rauschenberg here on the right, next to a Tom Wesselman on the left. Here's a better close-up of the Dan Flavin, even though the camera is not picking it up as well as I would like. I do love how it illuminates sort of the entire hallway. Ugh, and in the end here, we have these Vanessa German sculptures. They actually pulled out one Vanessa German sculpture to be a part of Crystal Bridges at 10, but I still think they look really great together here, just the two of these. This is a part of the museum that has been switched up pretty substantially. The Carrier James Marshall used to be on the wall there, and this sculpture is where the Sanford Biggers used to be. They've replaced it with a sculpture by Dan Webb, 
and actually where the Kerry James Marshall used to be right here has been replaced by a collaboration between Samford Biggers and Hank Willis Thomas, which is a really cool sort of optical work that changes as you change your position and perspective on it, if you can see that. I know this has been one of the longest vlogs I've ever made. <laughs> and so thank you so much if you've stayed with me and if you'd enjoyed it. I've just really loved bringing you along with me to see all of these incredible artworks in one place. And if you've made it this far, comment Saluit in the comment section because we're looking at one of his beautiful line drawings here. But I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I will be taking a little break for a few weeks, but fear not, I will be back to cover the September art fairs and all of the amazing fall exhibits that will be opening. So I will see you all in early September.